Tell the people how you feel about all the money we're spending. Freaks me out a little bit, not gonna lie. That's a lot of money, That's isn't it? a lot it? of money. And she's like, sheesh. And I'm writing the checks for them, so. <laughs> we're starting to feel the pressure and we've got to get this thing moving. We've got to start making some money and collecting some deposits and stuff because the outgo is big. <laughs> Welcome back. It's been an interesting week. In the last episode, we talked about trying to find a place to operate out of and the reason why we couldn't operate out of our house and the reason why a lot of those lots didn't work out. And it is purely because of zoning. Zoning wouldn't allow us to just rent some random lot. It has to be zoned correctly. So that basically forced our hand into renting a place, um, the place that we showed you last week. So this week's all about where you start feeling the crunch of things because we're working on the website and that's cost us money. We are working on getting on Google My Business. So we've got Google My Business running, which is huge, huge, huge. If you're gonna be in business, you need to get on Google My Business. Super easy to do. All you do is you go on Google My Business, set up your account and tell them where to send your postcard, but it does need to be a physical address. They will not send it to a post office box. They won't send it to a UPS store. So if you're trying to spoof the system by doing some of those things, it won't work. You need to be able to receive your mail there. But once you receive your mail there, that's how you show up when you Google something. Like if I search for fence contractors around me, that's how you show up on the Google Maps, which is a big deal. So that's one of the very first things that we did. We got our postcard the other day. So we verified our address. And unfortunately that's my house, but we had to start somewhere because we hadn't ha did not have the lease signed yet. So ours says that it's our house. That will quickly change on October 1st when we take over the lease. Tanya signed a lease today for the property that we're renting. And so on October 1st, we'll just make a change and we'll have to get a second postcard and re-verify our address, which isn't a big deal. But at least we're on there, we're starting to get ranked and we have the good people at .com Global Media working to get us up in the rankings for our area and what we do. So that's big too. Uh, you need to be working on those type of things really fast and then start networking. So one of the things that I did this week was I networked with uh, kind of a mentor group, I guess, if you will, or a peer group of other business owners in St. Augustine. They meet once a month and you just talk about all the things that you're going through in your business. And it's kind of a Christian faith-based business mentorship group. So everybody talks about the problems they're going through in their business and that'll be a really good tool. So one of the things that Tanya and I need to do is we need to establish a business banking relationship down here. And they were very quick to provide somebody that we can go talk to. So next week, that's gonna be one of the things we do is we start talking to a business banker about setting up a checking account and maybe even potentially getting a loan. We're looking at buying a Bobcat MT85 that'll allow us a way to get our holes dug. And the next thing is I'm looking at another piece of equipment that could help us possibly unload some trucks. Kind of recap, we've done the account setup with all the major vendors, the big vendors so that we can get stuff, but I'm sure we'll probably end up using Lowe's for some of our wood and some of the simpler things to begin with. Um, I haven't gotten any word back yet that we've got an account with any of these people. So we've sent off all the applications and hopefully we start hearing back from them. So we'll be following up with them to find out what the status of those accounts is. But when you start up a new business, it can be very tough to get business credit. So even if we can only get a cash account, we'll be happy, we'll take that, we'll pay them cash as we go and uh, be able to get the materials that we need to hopefully start making money. But we've got a couple leads on a couple projects, so we'll start working through some of those leads as soon as I'm ready. Like I said, the plan was to maybe sometime towards the end of September or as soon as I get back from the Fall Fence Forum in October, or hopefully we'll start putting some fence in the ground because right now the sea of red is getting bigger. We've had to do things like sign up for work comp insurance, sign up for a commercial policy. What else we do? We signed up with the Secretary of State, contractors licensing. So all we've done is spend money and there's been nothing coming in. Not to mention the building that we leased. You, we pay the first month up front, but then they collect another $10,000 worth of deposits. So that's kind of be prepared for that when you go into a building. They collected first, last, and then another $3,000 per unit that we're renting for a deposit. So that equates to writing a check for right around $10,000 that's basically just a deposit that hopefully we'll be able to use up or that we'll get coming back from us. And we'll show you how we account for that in our QuickBooks because that's actually things that need to be on our balance sheet as an asset. Um, it's not money that they've earned, it's still money that we have coming back to us if we do everything we're supposed to do. Oh, the insurance. Like, they ask you to project your insurance, how much work comp and how much is your payroll gonna be. So you have to kind of estimate how many payroll dollars you're gonna spend the first year. 
And then they start billing you for that immediately, even though we don't even have an employee yet. There's no employee. Uh, but yet, they're sending us a bill for $1,600 a month for all the team members that we think we're gonna have. And we'll get that back at the end of the year once they do an audit, should we choose to. But be ready for those type of things. The insurance, they start sending us a bill for $6,000 a month and as we add vehicles and we add equipment and if we if we start putting things into those buildings We'll need more insurance So we'll need coverage on the products and the tools and all the stuff that's inside those buildings So then our insurance goes up and up and up We're starting to feel the pressure and we've got to get this thing moving We got to start making some money and collecting some deposits and stuff because the outgo is big here Freaks me out a little bit not gonna lie That's a lot of money, that's isn't it? Money. And she's like Sheesh. And I'm writing the checks for him, so. <laughs> She's like, you better get out there and start working your butt off, huh? Get your butt out there. What do you have to say for the wives of the fence? Um, the biggest thing People I would started. say is be supportive. Understand, communicate, and make sure you guys are in tune with everything that's going on. Because it's not an easy process and it could ruin your marriage. <laughs> it won't ours because we've been through a lot, but. I just keep on seeing dollar bills go floating out the door, but no dollar bills are coming back in to replace them. So yeah, and I'm feeling the pressure because we've spent all this money, now it's time to start making that money work for us and we don't even have our first job yet. Uh, I did get this, I did get that really nice flagpole nice. installed. So if you want the full video on the train wreck that was that flagpole installation, go check out the SWI Fence channel. Um, but that's about all I've done. We've just done a lot of paperwork, applying for accounts, um, getting QuickBooks set up, which we'll take you inside and we'll show licenses. you QuickBooks. Yeah, licenses. Um, <laughs> Exemptions, taxes. Yeah, taxes, insurance. It's all that stuff that you need to be a legitimate business. And these are the type of things that people usually skip until later on. But that could cost you a, dearly if somebody finds out. If you get a work comp audit, and I've heard of a lot of people getting work comp audits, mm -hmm. show up on your job site and you don't have work comp for your people. Um, it could be a big problem and you don't want to get started off on the wrong foot so it's better off to take a little bit of time get started off correctly even though it can be scary and this is i think why james in one of the other videos said it's a really good idea to save up some money and be ready to start paying these things out of pocket ten thousand you know i mean we stroked a check for fifteen thousand dollars <laughs> out of our pocket to start leasing a building and we have zero revenue i mean so that's a lot of overhead for a little company with zero jobs coming in right now um, that's also why I think it's very prudent and why I'm not rushing. It's important to do it right. So mm -hmm. take the time to get it right so that you're not trying to make up later on. It's probably a really good idea too to stay at your job a little bit, you know. Row that boat a little closer to the dock before you jump off because you're going to need some extra income and if you can mm -hmm. find some extra income or sell some stuff you're not using, have a huge garage sale, do whatever because you're going to need money. You can start very, very cheaply, you know, with just one job and a friend, you know, a neighbor down the street. But I, I don't have that option because I just don't know anybody here. However, at that group that I went to yesterday, there were several people that said, you know what, I need some fence work, I need some fence work. So I think the calls will start rolling in and then it's just that referral business. I think that we'll be able to scale very quickly because it's gonna be more about uh, getting our name out there and people saying, oh, okay, SWI Fence, did our fence and then they'll tell all their neighbors and they'll start seeing us around. So I think we can build a pretty good book of business very quickly from that. But like I say, if you've got a job, probably keep it and start this on the weekends. And if you can work from your house, work from your house. Don't go get a building. We had very limited options here, which means the barrier to entry a little bit higher. Um, but hopefully it'll pay off in the long run having a physical location because we can do things like get on Google My Business uh, and Google Maps. And just looking professional. Uh, we want to start off letting people know that we're serious about what we're doing. We're not one toe in the water just testing the temperature. We'll be here tomorrow. So yeah, it's, it freaks even me out. I've done this before and this is like, I don't like to see money go out the door and not be 100% certain it's not going to come back. Because this, this is our money. Um, this is coming out of our pocket. There's not a SWI fence pot of money that, out there. This is, this is our money. So oh, if it goes you bad, have to, you have to jump. Yeah. If you're serious, jump. But I'm not doing much different than anybody else. I've still got, I'm rowing the boat closer to shore before I jump off of the SWI Wyoming train because I still collect a paycheck from that. So I'm working at a second job and I've still got the YouTube stuff that I'm doing. And we've got another thing that I, this is kind of a big secret. I don't know when I'm going to tell you about this. Uh, I'd like to get a little bit sure about it, but we've been able to cash flow this through some other ways that I'm making money. And 
Uh, that's kind of on the down low. I'm not I'm not 100% ready to tell people what I'm doing to help fund this operation. Just I don't, I don't know that there's a lot of people that are ready for that. It's totally legal, but uh, I'm a risk taker, what can I say? <laughs> so, so that's how we're funding this, this and the little bit of money that we brought into it. So, and then through our own, through our other job, the other job is basically helping pay for this too, through my paychecks because we can live pretty frugally and and help put money into the company. So let's take you inside and we'll show you what the balance sheet and the profit and loss look like. The profit and loss is pretty easy. It's just a loss. The balance sheet, we'll show you what we put into it so far and we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll talk a little bit about how we've set up our QuickBooks. And if you have any questions about any of this stuff, make sure and drop them down below because I can answer them on next week's video. Um, this, is, this really needs to be interactive and you'll get out of it what you put into it. So if you have any questions about what we're doing or how we're overcoming a hurdle, talk to us. So let's go inside and we'll take a look at QuickBooks and show you. That is also, I just want to say, that is a fine looking flagpole right there. I mean, dang, that's beautiful. Oh, I'll tell you something else. So here's a, here's a little tip, here's a pro tip. So I had some people come out and they installed a propane tank. And so we have a propane tank being installed because we're worried that we're gonna have power outages when the hurricanes come and things like that. And so we just want a backup power source. So anyhow, they came in, they hooked up our propane tank on Wednesday, which is right there, it's buried. We had them bury it because we didn't want to see it and uh, figured that'll be nicer. We'll be able to run our grill off of it. We'll be able to run our fireplace right here. There's the boy, run the fireplace off of it and then we'll have a grill hook up and then one for the generator. But anyhow, they were digging my lines in, they chopped through the internet. So I inquired, I, said, I was in there trying to do some stuff on the computer and, and my internet went down and I went out there, I said, you know, I think you guys hit my internet. No, no, we didn't see any cables. I said, you guys call for locates? I said, yeah, we called for locates. I said, okay, so I'm looking around, I'm talking to the neighbor and it's just my internet. I said, I think you guys hit the, hit the cable. And they said, well, that's not really on us, it's in your contract, it's your problem. Okay. By law, you're required to call 811. They said, oh yeah, we called 811, but they don't mark cable. I said, okay, well, that's interesting. That's different than Wyoming. I said, can you show me your 811 ticket? Can you get your 811 ticket so that I can look and see if they were supposed to be notified and we can see who's at fault here? They said, okay, you caught me. I didn't call them. They lied to me to my face. So don't do that to your customers. That really, really, I am gonna have a really hard time leaving them a positive review when they just flat out lied to me lied to me and got confrontational about what they were supposed to do. And it was only because I was a contractor that I knew it's a responsibility to call 811. They tried to put that on me like I was supposed to call 811. And if they're the ones digging, it's their job to call 811. So just the thing, if you're into digging or excavation, which a lot of construction workers are, make sure you're calling 811 and don't freaking lie to your customers. That did not come off well with me at all. And it immediately, immediately, set me off. So I got a hold of the salesman that sold me a job and let him know that we had a problem and just was, was not happy about that. So honesty, don't forget to be honest with your customers. If you can't deliver something in their budget, be honest with them. If you are gonna be late, be honest with them. If you forget to order their materials and now it's gonna put their project a week behind, say, you know what, we screwed up. We didn't order the materials and we thought we were gonna, I apologize. I'm not gonna give you the runaround, just be honest with them. Honesty is a big deal. I don't think people understand how crucial that is to doing business with customers and how it can impact your relationship with them. So that's another key takeaway from this week, not from something I did, but an experience I had with the contractor that was on my property. So be honest with your people. Just tell them. If you can't get to their job for three months, tell them you can't get to their job for three months. Over deliver and under promise, which is what we've always liked to do. And at SWI in Wyoming. Okay, I've rambled on. Let's go check out the QuickBooks and we'll see what's going on in there. And you can see how red it is. It's starting to make us nervous. So one of the things that we would like to show you every week is QuickBooks. So profit and loss balance sheet, kind of show you where the company is at financially, uh, whether or not we're making money. Because the goal is not just to make a bunch of revenue, but actually make a profit at the end of the day. So the first thing we ended up doing was setting up our lists and we needed a chart of accounts. QuickBooks sets you up with a chart of accounts by default once you select the type of operation you are. Uh, and we don't really care for those. So we basically imported all of our chart of accounts from our other company um, so that we can use that same numbering system just makes it a little easier for us to navigate as we're starting to put expenses and stuff like that into QuickBooks. 
So the 1200 accounts are always gonna be our other current assets. Fixed assets are always gonna start with a 15,000 um, and you can see, so income accounts are gonna be these 53,000s, this cost of goods. Really these expenses are not something that we use. These are, I think, a default for uh, QuickBooks. So our start was six. So anything with a 60,000 in front of it or a 60,000 number is going to be something that is job related. So all of our job related expenses. And then when you get into the 70,000, that means that's all overhead. We have direct and indirect expenses. Direct expenses are those ones that if we stopped installing any fence tomorrow and we never installed another fence, those would go away completely. Indirect expenses or overhead, the 70,000 is things like your rent and power bill. They aren't gonna stop because you have obligations. So you can theoretically not install a single fence or do a single construction job and those would still be there at least for a period of time. They don't decrease with the revenue. Direct expenses should decrease as revenue decreases. So when you're brand new to QuickBooks and you're setting up all of your accounts, the one thing I would suggest is keep it simple. Don't get too detailed. You may have fence installation income, you may have retail income, you may have uh, wholesale income. You can break that income down into as many buckets as you want, but the simpler you keep that, the easier it's going to be for you. There needs to be a level of detail, but don't get so detailed that it gets overwhelming. I've seen a lot of people set up QuickBooks and immediately they've got 500 different expense accounts and that's just, it's just too much. You don't need an expense account for paper and one for pencils. You can just do one for office supply and that gets all your paper pencils and other things. So you can be office chairs, it can be a lot of different things depending on how you account for your office furniture and fixtures. So talk with your accountant about that. If you're gonna set up QuickBooks, they can help you with that. The other thing we had to do is we had to set up item lists and that is how we're actually going to sell our work. So this basically determines how we can break down our bids. That's what the items are for for us. And we will do grouped items so that when I create a detailed estimate in QuickBooks, it doesn't show that entire estimate to the customer. All they see is a lump sum bid. When we do bids, we'll figure out how much labor, how much materials, whether or not there's any vehicle fuel, building permits, disposal fees, any of that stuff, and I'll break each one of those costs down, but then the customer, all they see is a lump sum bid. And that's a, something I've seen a lot of questions about and some of the forums is, is, should I show my customer the bid breakdown or should I just show them a lump sum bid? And my personal preference is to only show a lump sum bid. The only time we break it down into detail is if the customer has hired us on a time and material basis. That's typically repairs. Like if we go out to do a gate operator repair, we will bill them for each piece of material that they used, all the expenses like fuel, if we had fuel to get out to the project, and all the labor. Uh, think of it going to your mechanic, kind of how they bill. Lump sum is the way we prefer to do it, and that means that in the upfront, before they ever hired us, I gave them a price, they agreed to the price, and then they're gonna pay me that firm fixed price, regardless of whether or not I finish in more hours than I estimated it was going to take or less. If it takes more hours, I don't hand them a bill, and if it takes less, I don't give them a credit. I've, I've had people try and work that so that uh, you give them a bid, but then they still get to kind of treat it like time and material, so if you come under, then they want a credit for it. And most contracting is done on lump sum. Um, however, you'll have to do what's best for you. If you have any questions about anything as we go along, make sure you drop a comment down below. I'm happy to answer those as best I can. But let's get into the financial side of this thing. Profit loss standard. This automatically brings up your standard one, which is for the month. Um, but we'll go in here and we will select this fiscal year because I'm not really concerned about the month. We actually booked some expenses out in October just because we signed the lease in October, but actually wrote the check in September. So we booked those expenses in October, which will really be our first operational month, I expect. So we had some tools, uh, $58.56 worth of tools. I don't remember what that was, but we had those. Um, these are kind of the business licenses, the expenses. So setting up on SunBiz for uh, organizational documents, St. John's County, getting all the necessary licensing done for them, and those are those expenses. This rent is $48.76. That is the first month's rent for October that has already been prepaid, leaving us in the hole $5,130.56. And that had to come from somewhere. We've obviously booked a zero revenue, so that came out of our pocket. So this first column here is called cost of goods sold. It's your total cost of goods sold. And then I actually like to look at this customizer support and do a percent of income. It's not gonna be super exciting right now because we have no income. So this is actually, you can't have a negative percent of income, but we've lost money. We have negative gross profit. 
there's zero income, but this is where you can see your gross profit percentage. And I would suggest that you get that as high as you possibly can. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 would be perfect, as far as I'm concerned. And that's really what we're gonna be shooting for. So you can see this 60,000, these are all of our operational costs. Hopefully they would go away if we didn't install a single job. And these are the ones that are overhead that don't go away. So like we can't stop paying for our lease because we're in a lease. We would have to pay for that for 12 months even if we didn't install a single job now. These are direct or cost of goods sold. And then these are your overhead expenses and revenue would be up above here, but we don't have any revenue. So revenue minus cost of goods sold equals this gross profit. Then out of gross profit dollars, we take all of our overhead expenses and that would leave us with a profit. Since we don't have any profit, we're negative for the year. And I'll show you what that looks like on the balance sheet. All right, so lease deposits. We paid $10,876 and basically we prepaid rent and we have some deposits. So all that stuff is actually an asset, meaning that if we moved out of our building at the end of our building and we'd paid all 12 months of rent, we would have one month of rent plus a $3,000 deposit coming back to us. And so that's why that's shown as an asset on our balance sheet. Total member equity is $16,006. That means we put $16,006 into the company because there was no income. So Tanya and I had to write a check for that out of our own account. 10,000 of that went to these deposits. 5,000 went to uh, all the expenses, leaving us a negative income, meaning that if we sold the company tomorrow or shut the company down tomorrow, it's uh, we'd already have $10,800 coming back to us. What we don't want to see is we don't want to see that, that number go negative and I never want to see it go down. So our goal is to keep that number going up because that's how we're building value in our company. So hopefully that explains a little bit about where we're at and how you set up your QuickBooks if you're getting started. Some key takeaways from today's episode are make sure you row your boat a little closer to the dock before you jump. It is gonna take some money to get this started. As simple as it may seem, it's a little more complex than just getting a set of postal diggers or a hammer from the local hardware store and getting your first customer. There's some licensing and some things you'll need to do. You'll need to get insurance and maybe even a, possibly a building. Second key takeaway is if you can work cheaply and you can work out of your house or you've got a friend's yard that they'll share some space with you or a shared space, Get started as cheap as you can operationally. Keep that overhead as low as you possibly can for as long as you can and still operate effectively. We didn't have that option here. We had to get a building because we're not allowed to operate out of our house, plus we didn't have any room. Rent's just expensive here. That's just the cost of doing business for us and we'll have to get this thing going so that we can recover that. The third thing is, I would say start right. Don't start off trying to fly under the radar, just get it started right. And if that means you have to work your job a little bit longer so that you can take the steps needed to get it started right, do that. This has not been easy. We could have went out and tried to find our first customer the first day I decided to do this, but we would have been doing so with great risk. We wouldn't have had workers comp, we wouldn't have had contractors insurance, we wouldn't have been licensed. So it could have led to some fines and some other problems. And we elected to just get started the right way. And that's the way I would say that you need to start as well. Set up QuickBooks correctly and so that it's user friendly, but keep it simple. Don't get too complex with your system. Keep it simple, something you can understand, something hopefully your wife can understand, or whoever's gonna be doing your books. The more detailed and the more complex you make it, the more overwhelming it will seem over time, especially as you try to create budgets for your next year and things like that. Last but not least, if you don't know how to read these reports that I just went over, make sure that you spend some time getting to know how to read financial statements. So know how to read a profit and loss and what it's telling you and know how that relates to your balance sheet and what a balance sheet's telling you. If you have any questions about any of this stuff, drop them down below and I'll explain them as best I can or point you at a video that'll explain the principles. Um, until next time, you have a good dang day.